Hello, I'm Tommy Moore, and in this particular video, I wanted to look at military combative systems. And I wanted to compare something from the past and something from the present. And so the two systems I'm going to be looking at in this particular video are going to be Fairburn's All-In Fighting, and we're going to be looking at the American Marines MUCMAP program, so the Marine Corps Martial Arts program. Now, it's interesting to note how military combatives have changed from the ultra-modern to the techniques of yesteryear. And some of the things I can't help but notice is it's kind of gone a bit wrong. Now, I understand that warfare has changed and a lot of the things that a Marine would be called upon, this type of Marine, might be things such as hard arrests, there's more likely to be more peacekeeping style duties and there is a greater influx of media. So being accountable for what you do and being reasonable in your levels of force. I completely understand how that might have dictated much of the curriculum in this. Now, one of the areas that I think is, is very, very strange is in the pedagogy. Now, pedagogy is a slightly wanky word, but essentially it's the, it's the science of teaching. It's the science of learning. How do we get people to learn things in an efficient and mutually beneficial way that makes teaching easy for the teacher and learning easy for the pupil? Now, when you look at something like All in Fighting by William Fairburn, now the main thing to note is this is not really meant to be digested in book form, although it is in book form. It's meant to be disseminated by an instructor that knows what they're doing and much is the like for this. But th these are the reference materials we have available to us. All in Fighting, we go straight in. Essentially, one of the first pages, smash the cunt in the face, grab his eyes, shunt him down. We've got all manner of nice, easy horribles, near in the knackers, grab him by the face, throw him down. Once he's down, tap dance on his face. It's a very direct, brief book, giving very direct, brief and easy to retain content. And you'll notice that this created a time of active red war, comprehensive war. The curricula is about yay big, of which you can probably take out that much because some of the things are talking about arresting techniques and things that are outside of the scope. So if you imagine, this is what you're looking at. And in that, you've got bare bones striking, you've got bare bones grappling, bare bones anti-grappling, use of small blade, long blade, stick and bayonet. So all of the good minerals you need to be able to combat effectively. When I look at the Marine Corps program, one of the main things that astounds me is, is the, the strange pedagogy, the strange curriculum they have in place. And it's done in belts, and I understand why it's done in belts, because you know this is something you need to consume very, very quickly, and you're off in the field. You're either an SOE agent or you're a commando. You've got a couple of days of this, and you're gone. Today, you need to keep people amused, energized, infused, and fit. So a sense of progression, I do understand that. But you're moving through belts and you're moving from tan to black and there are several degrees of black. And there are nominal invested hours in the McMap system. So if you do 17.5 hours of this, you can then move on to green or you can then move on to gray, or you can then move on to something else. But the curriculum seems very strange and then it starts you off with some very, very, very terrible boxing from what they call the warrior stance. Uh, if you look at how they're teaching an uppercut, it's like a bloody Shoryuken from Street Fighter. He's bending down really low and driving into the air. There's just some really shocking content in here. And if you're thinking of you know, what is the easiest thing to teach someone, who, in, and, and with the army or with the Marines, you need to assume that people know fuck all. They might not know fuck all, but you need to assume. In the same way that everyone's taught to make the bed properly, people are taught to swim properly. You assume that people are idiots and you remould them in a better image. In this, if the opening curricula is how to hold your fist, how to uppercut like a dickhead, and how to do some very, very basic brake falling that doesn't match the gear you'll actually be wearing, I'd be thinking if that's my first 17.5 hours of instruction, where is my return on investment? Where is my value on return? Because a lot of the skills that are taught early on in the curricula of this are very perishable, very finite, and very hyper-skilled. To be able to box is a hard skill. To be able to box properly is hours and hours and hours. 
And if you're looking to box for combatives, if you're looking at boxing without gloves, increase that. Boxing with gloves is one level of difficulty. Boxing without gloves under real self-defense duress is more, is on top of that. So again, what I'm finding in, in this particular curriculum and as it moves through the belts is it starts people on a ground which is really shaky. It starts people on a ground that takes a lot longer to learn than the hours specified in the book. Where it does have its benefits in this system, obviously it's a system for predominantly peacetime. So it grades people up and the more, the more they move through the grades, what you see is an increase in the complexity of the grappling, which is an interesting thing to note. So as you start to move your way to black, you see a lot more Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you see a lot more wrestling deployed, grappling and anti-grappling. In the early days, it's very much about the use of the bayonet, it's the use of the empty hands. Um, but some of the bladed weapon work in this is, is, is utterly shocking. So you imagine you've got actual people that will go in actual combat and they're being taught reverse grip slashes. Who the fuck you reverse grip slashing? Yep. When you're in armour and they're likely in armour, or at least tough clothing, who are you reverse grip slashing? Nobody. That's who. Nobody. You're looking at just terrible, terrible, even down to the gun disarms. Look at this. So a bloke's got a pistol to his head. His first recourse is to not move out of the way laterally, either side of the pistol. Push the pistol up, keeping it perfectly in line with his face. So he doesn't move his face, he doesn't move his body. Apparently he doesn't care about either of these things. He's just gonna push the gun up in the air. He doesn't even drop down as he lifts the gun up. So you've got a lot of just nonsense. And it, it surprises me how this passed muster, how this actually got approval. Um, it's, it's very strange. Um, one of the things I think might be at fault here is that Fairburn was a military man, then a policeman, then a civilian instructor, and then a military instructor again. And so you can see he's got a full spectrum, holistic knowledge of, of what needs to be done. I suspect a lot of this is based on a military pedagogy and not a martial arts or unarmed combat pedagogy. And, and that will have pros and cons, but it seems like this throws you in properly with techniques that require little skill, little nuancing, and are highly effective, are high percentile. When you move into the McMack program, you start to open the doors with low percentile, high risk, high skill techniques and attacks that, if you're assuming a person knows nothing, is very difficult to deploy. Um, so I was very, very shocked. And you take here, like the use of the knife. So this chap here, look how wide that swing is with the knife. Look at that. He's really swinging with that knife. And that knife, it's not a barong, it's not a machete. It doesn't have to have such a massive arc to it. It's a small fighting knife, you know, five, six inches. What's he doing swinging it around miles away from his body? What does that teach him? What poor behaviours? You know, it doesn't, it's, it's out of step with every other bladed, blunt and unarmed system for combative self-defence. I feel like this is a million miles away from what you see everywhere else from very reputable sources. You know, if you take something like urban combatives against something like this, million miles away. You take urban combatives and something like this, lots and lots of synergies. So, you know, what we consider high quality, fit for purpose, good unarmed combatives, unarmed self-defense, and even armed self-defense, we find in the historical works. And we see they're very practical, easy to maintain. Now, I'm not saying this is a perfect book. There is some stuff in this that is just weird as fuck. Weird as fuck. And you can readily abandon them. But I would say that the percentage of poor in this compared to the percentage of poor in that is apples and oranges. This, this, this mainly contains some very good material. This mainly contains some very poor material with some instances of relatively good material. What it does do well, it expands on the use of the bayonet, it expands on the use of grappling on the ground, and it expands on the use of holds, compliance, and so on. Because I understand that the greater need or the greater necessity for arresting or holding or restraining compared to the very obvious bad guys of the Nazis, you just chop that bastard in the track here, pull out his eyes and tap dance on his head. No guilt needed. So I understand the differences in conflict, but the, the, the melee weapon work here, the, the, the stabs, the movements, the cuts, uh, the, the gun disarms, you know, if, if anything, a part of the military which 
spends a lot of time with guns, you'd expect them to have something better than this. You know, I can understand slightly hokey unarmed combat. That's not their main bag. But stuff with guns, that's just shocking shit. You know, this is this is worse than some of the worst Krav Maga you can find out there. Uh, so it's very interesting to see how the notion of combatives pedagogy has changed in that in Fairburn's day, simple, retainable, high percentage. You know, it's very much about putting the man down, putting the man out and moving on. A lot of this stuff is about controlling the person, maintaining the person, locking them up, potentially choking them. But there's a lot more control and maintenance and there's a lot more material to get through here you know there are lots of belts you know it goes up to sixth degree black belt all with mandated hours and mandated techniques and what i would say is it gets sometimes better towards the end the higher proficiency belts than it does at the front so in this it starts you with terrible kickboxing terrible kickboxing and some of the worst defenses against habitual acts of violence you'll ever see so it starts you on very shaky ground and it moves its way up to relatively good wrestling in jiu-jitsu. Um, but by association, also some terrible, terrible knife and blunt work. So the knives, blunts, that kind of stuff is awful throughout this entire book. Um, the unarmed stuff early on, the things that you're teaching people that know nothing, is very, very dangerous to those people. Very high risk to those people, very low percentage. You take Fairburn, you're teaching people from the off things that are a lot easier to work, a lot easier to retain, a lot easier to pull off. So again, the curriculum of this is very sound. You can follow it through and get a good understanding of most areas. Admittedly, it doesn't cover the ground so much as this, and it doesn't cover as many varieties of weapon as this, but I would say the statistical surety of the techniques, the things that will actually work in this is far greater than in this. Uh, so I'm making a bit of a pet project at the moment to kind of get as many of these combative guides from as many forces as possible and see how they compare to historical works from World War One and World War Two. But what I'm finding so far is we hit the 50s and we hit Styers, and then after that point, most forces go into an abyss of awful. They all jump on the karate trend, the kung fu trend, then they jumped on the craft trend and now they're into making their own stuff, which is essentially slightly shitty craft with a bit of shitty Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, so whilst I'm sure there are some very, very good practitioners of Muck Map, when I'm comparing the two on a curricular basis, this is easier to retain, easier to learn, higher percentage. This is harder to retain, higher risk, easier to forget, and it doesn't match the progression that you would see in other areas of martial arts, other areas of combatives, it doesn't match what most people would consider common sense structured learning, um, which is very strange because it's from an organisation, the military, which is all about structured learning. So it's very, very interesting to see how they've taken this content. I wonder what inspired them to put this material in this order. I should probably imagine that because you've got a lot of young fit people, you want them punching and kicking each other as early as possible, so they maintain interest, so they find it fun, so they can just get stuck in and be rolling on the ground and punching each other. So I, I get that. I get it from a fun perspective. But in terms of things you really need to know first, assuming most people don't get to black belt in this, assuming most people only move their way through two to three belts, what you get in two to three belts in this over what is about 100 hours, two to three belts is about 100 hours in this particular world, what you get from that and what you'd get from five or six hours of this is a world of difference. Um, so it's a fascinating thought. I would encourage you to make your way through both, form your own opinions, make your own opinions, but I'm very, very shocked at the poor quality of this and the lifelong quality of this. And things have changed and things do change, but this performs well under fire even 60, 70 years after its usefulness which would have typically expired. So I'd say Fairburn has done a very good job in tapping under how people fight, what they need to do, and what can be learned and, and absorbed quickly. McMap seems to have jumped on the notion of keeping people entertained, keeping them engaged, but not necessarily keeping them safe.